everybody, it's Larry, and today's video I think you're going to find very interesting. We're going to talk about mtDNA, yDNA, autosomal DNA, the differences, what they mean, what they mean to you. So if you watch the end of the video, I guarantee you're going to understand not only the differences, but you're going to see how each can be applied to your genealogical research. So you've taken the ancestry DNA, and that's the autosomal DNA, and you spit in the tube, you screw it on the cap, and you mailed it off. And, you know, four to eight weeks later, you get this. You get a list of DNA matches. Well, what exactly does this mean? Well, we need to go back to some of the basics to see what it means and to understand it. This is a genealogical tree. And it is the same for everyone in the world. Doesn't matter your gender, doesn't matter your race, doesn't matter anything like that. Everybody's tree looks exactly like this from a genealogical perspective. Everybody had a mother and father. Fathers, the males are represented in blue, and the purple or pink represents the females. Okay, so everybody had a mother and a father. Everybody that's ever been born, ever will be born, you know, this is what your genealogical tree looks like. Now, that's not necessarily your biological tree, okay? Now, even though you inherit half from your mother, half from your father, and they from, you know, their mother and father, your genetic or biological tree would look something similar to this. Now, this is not my genetic family tree or anybody's that I know. It's a example representation of that. The gray would represent people whom I would genetically match to. That is, people who would show up in this list would have to match to one of the people shown in gray in this chart. The ones that are white are people that you do not match biologically or through a DNA test. For example, I have a second cousin once removed, well, actually two, that I do not share DNA with. Okay, My mother does on one side, my aunt does on the other, and I don't because of the DNA, the recombinations and the drop-offs. I do not share DNA with the people that are represented in this in white. The ones in gray, I do, and everybody has this in their trees okay so there is a difference between a genealogical family tree and a genetic family tree and it's very important to understand the differences now everybody everybody has a genealogical family tree well it's starting to be a tongue twister <laughs> so the one on the left is mine and the one on the right is someone else's so when we, you know, take in our test and we've gotten this match list, what we want to do is we want to find who is the most recent common ancestor, MRCA, most recent common ancestor. So for cousins, that means that I'm going to match that person at a grandparent level. That's going to be the person that I have in common with that person. Now, we can see this over on the DNA match list. I'm going to pick out, it says here, first cousin. Okay, so we've got a first cousin on the list. JC, managed by Jerry Keeley. So I pulled this up for us to save some time. And here it shows that my father's father, my grandfather, is the same as her mother's father, her grandfather. So we both share the grandfather because we're first cousins. So, again, my father's father, her mother's father. And so we can see this represented here with her mother's father. And then over on the left, you see my father's father. Okay? Now, if you look at second cousins, you share a great-grandparent. So, you know, if I was going to look at that, I would come back over here, and I would look, let's say, at MM. And I pulled them up for, you know, brevity. My father's father's father is her mother's father's father. So we come over here, her mother's father's father, and on the left, my father's father's father. So this is a representation of how we match in yellow. That's our MRCA. That's an overlay of ours. So looking one more, we'll look at, you know, a third cousin. So we look at a third cousin, and uh, so we don't have to pull them down through the match list. Here's a third cousin. My mother's mother's father's father and her 
mother's father's mother's father. And we can see that represented over here. Her mother's father's mother's father on the right and my mother's mother's father's father over on the left. So this is how we match. And each one of these on our match list is going to match us in some way like this on the left. And we don't know where. Now, unless they fall into the white spot, in which case they won't be on our match list, but uh, uh, there will be people who are related through the genealogical tree that won't show up. Fourth cousin, you match it a third grade. Fifth cousin, fourth grade. Sixth cousin, fifth grade. Now, I'm going to show you one more, and this is removed. And a lot of people get confused when it comes to somebody being removed. And it's kind of like, you know, you're not really related to them. Well, you are. And what that means is, let's say right here, my grandfather, okay, that's my paternal grandfather, my father's father, is her mother's 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 father. Okay, makes me seem really old. <laughs> I'm in my 50s. But, you know, obviously there was, you know, uh, some young births in here. And for the record, I want to say that I actually found a first cousin uh, three times removed where I'm the youngster and I have a 96 year old relative in South Carolina who is my first cousin three times removed. So, uh, I, I'm making them feel old, but at 96, hey, congratulations there. So here it is. My father's father over on the left is represented in yellow, and their mother's 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 father over on the right. Now, if you count the circles, okay, on mine you count out from me one, two circles to the one in yellow. And on the right you count out one, two, three, four circles to the one in yellow. So four minus two, there's a difference of two. So because I match at the grandparent, okay, so that's a first cousin, and the difference in generations is two, four minus two, they are a first cousin two times removed. So they're my first cousin two times removed. We come over here, so they're a first cousin because they match me at the grandfather, and you always take the person who is closest to your MRCA. Yeah, that's really important. It's the closest to the most recent common ancestor, which I'm the closest to the most recent common. The most recent common is Clarence Brown, and I'm only two, two down. So that's the first cousin, and then minus one, minus two. And that's how you do it, okay? You don't go from the other side and go, you know, third cousins twice removed. And I know it makes it seem further away, but, you know, this person, <laughs> even though there's, you know, an extra two generations, they are my first cousin. Two generations removed. They are my first cousin. And I know a lot of people get really confused when it comes to the first cousin once removed. So I just thought I'd bring that up real quick. So let's talk quickly about Y-DNA. So here we have the charts. Now, in Y-DNA, it only passes to the males. Females, you cannot get a Y DNA test. Okay, and we'll explain that in just a, in a short. But Y is passed from male to male to male to male to male. Okay? Only the males have it. And the other person, they can only get it from their males. So a lot of people talk about how accurate Y DNA is in comparison to autosomal. I'm going to just state for the record, it is just as accurate. No more, no less. Because when you match somebody on a Y DNA, yes, indeed, you've proven that you match that person. But autosomal does that too. Okay, well, they've got their tree and says that their, you know, sixth great grandfather on the paternal line is Bob. How accurate is their record? Well, it's about as accurate as any other tree on Ancestry. Okay, that is a misconception that if you take this Y DNA test, it magically opens doors because it's more accurate. Well, because it passes from male to male to male and doesn't go through any lines, you know where you're seeking. You, you know, in my case, my biological fathers are brown, so I'm looking up the brown line. But he could have been adopted like I was or some brown in the 1700s. You know, there could have been an event his parents killed, lived with cousins or aunts or uncles or 
just random people. I don't know. Maybe he went someplace else and changed his name. I don't know. But it means that my biological line, insofar as I know it, is Browns. And so when you take the Y DNA test, then let's say that you go to FTDNA, you take in a Y test, because Ancestry does not offer the Y DNA test anymore. And I put it up on the board for Brown. And if I match several people, I might get some clues as to who uh, the grandparents of the grandparents of the grandparents are, because somebody may have it documented. Doesn't mean it's right, but because I know for a fact that I match them on this line, then my probabilities go up that it may possibly match. Now, what can happen is if you match somebody at a lower spot and then match somebody the next node up, and that's where the power of the Y DNA really comes into play. Is it more accurate? It's only as accurate as the trees on the other side, just like when you're dealing with an ancestry tree. And that's very important. The next thing we have is mtDNA, mitochondrial DNA, and this is only passed down from woman to woman, just like the male Y DNA. Unlike the male, which only passes to the males, the mitochondrial passes from female down to female, but it also goes from female down to male. But since the males don't pass it along, on the chart, it, it looks the same way. It's female to female to female to female, but it goes also to the males. So that can be kind of confusing. And uh, so what it looks like in the chart is this. So the Y DNA test and the M DNA test, those are not done by Ancestry anymore. Ancestry did a long time ago, I think, offer a Y DNA test. Uh, but they don't do that now and they don't deal with the chromosome browsers. And so the next thing we're going to talk about is the X chromosome. So while the Y you know, chromosome, we, we talked about the Y test and the Y passes from father to father to father to father. And because of that, uh, just like the mitochondrial test passing mother to mother to mother, and even though it is passing to both the males and the females uh, children, uh, only the females pass it along. So in a chart, it shows as we did the female to female to female. But the X and Y chromosomes can be uh, a little different. Now, when we're talking about the Y, the Ys only come in that straight line, kind of no matter what. But when we talk about the X inheritance, now we start getting into some gender specifics. Because if you're a male you got your only X from your mother's side. So if you are a male and you're doing X research, then all of the X's will be on your mother's side. Now your father had an X, but he didn't pass you an X. He passed you a Y. If, however, you're a female, then you got one X from your mother and you got one X from your father. And that father, you know, he got his Y from his father and his X from his mother. So the pattern for that looks like this. And that's, you know, quite a bit different than the ones we've seen before. So, you know, remember the Y was the straight line down through the fathers. The mitochondrial or, you know, the mtDNA looks like the straight line down through the mothers. And the X is gender specific. The X is if you are a male, your X will, all, all your X matches will be on the maternal side. If you are female, then they can be on either one of your father or mother's or on your grandmother on your father's side. It's important to note that X and Y are chromosomes, which are both part of the autosomal test. However, Ancestry doesn't give you specific Y or X information and that also the Y DNA test is specific on the Y chromosome and it actually takes that one single chromosome and tests all of the markers you know on that chromosome so you know you have a Y67 test 67 markers the Y111 test 111 markers uh, the 500 500 markers 700 700 markers and etc uh, you know there's thousands of markers and it tests those markers and then the idea is that the more you match 
the more identically you match somebody else. And since it's on the Y chromosome, uh, that more identically you match, the more certain you can be about the connection between the two. Uh, the mtDNA test is similarly uh, in the female line. There's not a specific test for the X because, as I said, the X and the Y are part of the autosomal. The Y DNA test is, you know, tested specifically. There's not one specifically testing on the X at this time, testing, you know, a variety of markers, probably because you get uh, into the gender specifics. You know, if you are a male and you were to do a, an X test, uh, let's say that they created an X test like they did the Y test, then you would get some of the same certainty. But as you can see, the pattern isn't, you know, under a single line. It, there's such a variation, you know, of the possible surnames that they chose not to do that. And I think it's also important to note that, you know, Ancestry does have the X and Y information, but because they don't have the chromosome browser, it's not really useful insofar as an X information or Y information. But if you take that same Ancestry DNA test and you were to port it over to FDNA, as exampled in another video, then you know at that point you can use the chromosome browser and do some specific examinations on you know the X and Y chromosome in comparison to other people. I hope this kind of explained the autosomal DNA, uh, which gives you you know the tree. This you know this is your autosomal DNA matches. So when you're talking about autosomal, uh, this is the matches you're getting. And what it's in representation of is the people in this fan chart. Because beyond this point, you know, when you get out here, when you get beyond the edges of what we're seeing represented here in the in this genealogical tree, the genetic tree is falling off and you're not going to find the matches there. Okay? So genetic, or excuse me, genealogical tree, genetic tree. You have them, they have them. And that's how you know you compare the two. So when you're looking at the Y DNA, again, that's only the males. It's a direct line. It's a very distinct test. You're only looking for a certain number of people. And if you're trying to break down a wall, or you know, if you're dealing a crossword, sometimes you just need that word that goes across in order to get the word that goes down and meets it. So by finding somebody in that area, it can make the breakthrough that you're wanting. And then the same things happen in the mtDNA. Here, it can break through and give you a piece of that crossword for anybody in this area. Okay? Anybody in that area. So that is the xDNA, the yDNA, and the autosomal DNA in graphic form. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked it, share it with your friends. Uh, remember to subscribe. Click the bell notification to be notified when another video comes out. I uh, appreciate y'all, and as always, you guys have a great week.